Welcome to Koyakonasant, home to a truly community-based living landscape partnership. This is the story of 14 partners working to implement 33 projects within a £4.8 million scheme funded by the National Lottery Heritage Fund. The scheme took over nine years to organise, five years to implement, and has a 40-year vision to fulfil. There have been many challenges which have led to key learnings, starting with the initial community involvement, the funding application process, the implementation and wider community impact. The journey for Coyacon and Ascent Living Landscape Partnership starts back in 2007. Gordon Slight from Historic Ascent describes those early days. Back in the uh, early and middle 2000s, uh, there was an organisation in Ascent uh, called the Ascent Interpretation Group. It was representatives of uh, a number of the local uh, bodies, Historic Ascent, Ascent Foundation, uh, Kulag Community Woodland Trust and um, the Field Club. Um, and we were just interested in learning more about the landscape and going for exploratory walks uh, together where those of us who had an interest in the archaeology would talk about that. Those of who got a particular expertise in the natural history would talk about that. In the course of the conversations that we held on these days out, uh, we constantly came back to the fact that actually getting funding for large projects was really a major difficulty. And so we began to wonder whether it would be more feasible to work together to do this. Um, and so in uh, preparation, uh, we looked around to see where the possibilities were, uh, explored landscape partnership, filled in all the forms, and sent in an application in 2009. I think the key things that we learned, first of all, was that it was a monumentally difficult application to put together from small organisations because none of us had uh, professional staff in a position to sort of take a lead at that time. We learned. The second thing that we learned was that a big problem was going to be cash flow. If we had grant funded projects then we would not receive the grant until the work had been done and how on earth were we to do the work and pay the invoices that came in uh, and allow for a time lag between those coming in and the uh, grants coming in to cover that. Some years after we'd put in that initial application uh, and been turned down, the lottery uh, contacted us again to say, had we considered resubmitting, as they had initially suggested, and we said that yes, we had considered doing that, but weren't in a position to do so at that point. Uh, but some of the other organisations and people who'd been involved in that initial bid were having further conversations at this stage, out of which the call uh, scheme together came together, uh, and they uh, decided to launch an, uh, an application for a landscape partnership funding. And it was at that stage that we then joined in uh, call and the landscape partnership uh, application. The Ascent Interpretation Group went through the process of applying for a landscape partnership scheme and realised that the community-based format was a good fit for the National Lottery Heritage Fund. However, the fund was very difficult for small organisations to apply for large project funding. And if the project was successful, the main concern was the capacity to manage the cash flow. Mark Foxwell of Scottish Wildlife Trust continues the story for 2010. The Scottish Wildlife Trust's largest reserve is at Benmore Koyak. Uh, in 2010, we decided that because many of the land management issues that affect uh, the reserve can only be managed on a landscape scale, we decided to set up a partnership um, to see if we could manage land better in a more collaborative way. In 2011, the Koyak Ascent Living Landscape Project was launched 
Um, at that time we had seven partners and all of them were significant landowners and all of them were strongly interested in good environmental stewardship. Uh, we wrote a project plan and all the partners signed up to it uh, and the, the plan has a vision until 2050 uh, and in order to start delivering that vision uh, we needed some uh, fairly significant sources of funding. Um, so we prepared an application to the National Heritage Lottery Fund Landscape Partnership Programme. Scottish Wildlife Trust is very keen on this project uh, and has been the lead partner since, since it began. Uh, and that's because we believe that working in partnership with like-minded people is the very best way to achieve environmental gains uh, in the Highlands. So the lessons I've learned from this landscape partnership project are number one, working with a large group of partners is really, really rewarding, but it's also quite challenging. Uh, and holding the partnership together and getting it facing in the right direction um, can be, can be uh, difficult but rewarding. Uh, the second lesson I think is that a project like this uh, with multiple partners and multiple projects is a management challenge and that should not be underestimated. Uh, and you need a lead partner with the capacity to deliver that uh, and handle the finances. The third lesson I think is, is one of time really. Uh, although a landscape partnership might be five years, that's not really very long when you're considering uh, forestry projects for example. Um, and it would be good if you could build more development time into the, the, the initial application so you could work some schemes up so you're ready to go uh, once the project starts. As the lead organisation, Scottish Wildlife Trust has found working with community groups rewarding but challenging. Corpy has confirmed that complex projects are a huge challenge. There's a need for a lead partner with capacity to provide the administrative support. And landscape natural heritage projects take a lot of time and need to be developed before the project starts. Over the five years, Corpy has achieved most of the expected outputs, but it is the unexpected outcomes that in some ways has been most satisfying. Partners highlight some of these unexpected outcomes. It has been enormously worthwhile doing this. Yeah, and I've put, I mean, so much thought and time into this and work with amazing people. I mean, that, I mean, that sounds sort of a bit over the top, but I think everybody I've worked with and we've chosen to work with has put in a huge amount of work and we are going to end up with these, I mean, just wonderful books, amazing compositions. Um, it's just a wonderful, sort of wonderful, a beautiful future archive really, just fantastic material, so yeah, hugely, hugely worthwhile. One unexpected uh, impact of the project that we ourselves ran, which was the Clactol Brock project, has been to get the Rescue Project of the Year award uh, from Current Archaeology magazine. Uh, this means that we have had national recognition for the importance of the work that we've been doing at Clactol over the last few years. The biggest impact of the Kogak Ascent Living Landscape was the revalidation mission in 2015. So the, all geoparks have to be revalidated every four years and UNESCO came to the Northwest Highlands in 2015 and we took them to meet all of the different partners that were involved in the, getting the coal program up and running back then and they were so impressed by that that it was really the thing that tipped the, the balance for the revalidation mission and that allowed us to keep the UNESCO status for a further four years, develop the organisation and our project and programme and um, it, it's really allowed us to continue for, for the, the last six years and it allowed us to have a successful revalidation mission in 2019 as well. So UNESCO status for Scotland for the last six years. It's difficult to quantify the exact value, but we estimate it to be above £100,000 and that's due to us being able to get involved in new projects and, and apply for new funding and also to um, build our, our own membership schemes through the, the Friends programme and other donations and tours and things like that. So if we hadn't have gotten through that mission in 2015, um, it's very possible that the organisation wouldn't still be here. And so that, that has allowed us to bring in that money to the Northwest Islands. Unexpected outcomes have been significant for the individual projects and partners. Moreover, the core piece scheme structure has fostered a stronger partnership and partners highlight the benefits of collaboration for the local communities. I think there, there were 
distinct advantages of being a collection of voluntary organisations because uh, the, it means that there's a sort of definite community base which is very different from a local authority organising something for part of a local authority area. These were organisations that were rooted in the communities uh, that were represented um, and uh, that m has made life much more complicated because if you're dealing with uh, 12, 14 organisations uh, spread over a very large geographical area, uh, that's a very different uh, kind of scenario from two or three big um, local authorities and national organisations putting together a landscape partnership. But that, I still think, has been overall a, a great advantage of this particular scheme. We've got a major problem of depopulation here, so priority would be housing. Um, but that's something that we can, has been running alongside the, the core projects. Um, as far as, I mean, the importance of the core projects and the core funding, I think they're hugely important in that they, um, they're projects that will attract tourists and potential um, sort of new people who might want to come and live here just because we, we are showing how rich the culture is, how, and we've given access to, let's say with the past, there's easier access to, to land for people to enjoy the landscape. It, what's been important has been the way in which a number of organisations that otherwise would never have got into the same room together or very unlikely to have done and certainly not in the number that took place and across the range of organisations have with some hesitancy maybe at times and some hiccups over the uh, defining exactly what the purposes were and how core was going to function and a number of issues about the processes for um, awarding the funding and um, subsequent monitoring of it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I think it, it, has, it has actually led to a, a, a way in which people across the whole area of Coyac and Assen, a wide number of people know, have met each other, know each other, have worked together, and organisations have collaborated. And, and that wouldn't, without that having happened, I think the whole area would be in a much weaker position, interesting enough, to be able to respond to what are other initiatives now appearing on the scene. The, the, um the partners have identified that as there happened to be an absence of statutory organisations, the partnership has increased the community involvement. The partnership has not taken over the role of each organisation, but rather supported their wider aims within a landscape scale collaboration. When communities lead their own projects in the partnership, then they are partners in the partnership. The process of the scheme has allowed the communities to be more resilient in the long run. The scheme had demonstrated the advantage of collaboration between the community organisations and the benefits of wide-scale collaboration in the future. The partners now highlight the benefit of landscape scale projects. My main interest is in uh, the environment and nature conservation uh, and my, my favourite projects uh, in the partnership uh, have been the woodland project where there's 400 hectares of new native woodland uh, with another 400 planned. Uh, in the crofting project where there's now two demonstration crofts and various other uh, activities going on which are really good for, for uh, an environment, for food production and also for the community. Uh, and sustainable deer management which has moved on in leaps and bounds over the last five years. Um, and we now know a lot more about the habitat condition uh, in, the, in the coal area. The, what kind of land, what will be the landscape of Ascent in 20, 30, 40 years time? Because it's the actions taken now or have been taken is what people will be living with. I think there's a more developed awareness of what is happening in terms of climate change and the thinking about what measures might be taken across the area to um, make the right necessary contribution and changes to address these matters. Um, Partners identify that we need to act now. We need to support sustainable management by individual land managers and the community. 
Only with collaborative sustainable management will there be a richer and more diverse landscape in the future. It is with thanks to the National Lottery Heritage Fund that the communities of Koyak and Ascent have been able to start this journey. The communities are working towards a more resilient landscape that supports the people that live in it. Uh, I think the thing that surprised me most is that, that with, with a year or so to go, uh, Boyd organised a community meeting um, to discuss next steps and to, to gauge reaction to the, to the project. Uh, and despite all the, the difficulties of running a project like this and the fact that people were, were really busy on delivery, um, 50 odd folk turned up. Uh, there was a huge amount of enthusiasm, a great deal of thought and ideas on, on new projects. Um, and that, that, was, that was really pleasing to see. Um, now this project lasts, it's got a vision till 2050. Um, so, you know, let's just keep going.